Hi Twitch, hi YouTube. This is going live on Twitch and is going to get dumped later on YouTube. So there, we set it. We'll use that as our cut point and let's get going. Um, this is the Artillery 3D Genius Pro. Now we did do an unboxing a few years ago on the Genius and I believe I sent that up to Zamboni Girl and she's still printing with it daily. Um, it's helping her get her through college and get her printing addictions going. And um, so Artillery reached out and asked if I'd like to look at the Genius Pro. I said, yeah, I'm curious. I'd like to see what the differences are. Uh, what makes it a Pro versus the original. So I'm going to slide over here so I can see the screen. I'm going to read you the specs off of their website. Um, I'm not going to pretend to have these memorized because I don't. And we'll go from there. Um, let me see if I can scroll the mouse up this way. It is one of the things that is added on this is automatic bed leveling. Um, the Genius did not have that. Now, it looks to be similar to a BL Touch, but it is their own internally developed version of a BL Touch. So I cannot say if there's any patent infringement there or if it was just, a, hey, this is a good idea. Let's find a different way to do it. Don't know yet. Um, out of the box, it comes with the same tempered glass that the X1, X2, Genius, and the Hornet and every other printer artillery has put out had. However, comma, optionally, it's in this bag, for about $35 more, you can get a flex plate direct from the manufacturer. The reason they sell it as an add-on instead of coming with it is because some people like glass, some people like flex plates. So why ding everybody for the price of the flex plate if for people that just want glass? I can't knock it. Uh, oh, subsectors here too, and fix them, dude. Oh, yes, obligatory fix them, dude plug. We have the new fix them, dude shirt. You can check them out over at fixemdude.com. Did I get that right? Fix them, dude. All right, back to the genius, and I am over caffeinated. It does have filament runout detection, a touch screen, synchronized Z, and a all in one structure. It does retain the. Um, the top bar is injection molded, similar to the X2 and the original Genius. Uh, some people love that, some people hate that. I personally didn't find that it made a difference one way or the other. Um, same ribbon cables that they've used in the past. It has a 32-bit motherboard uh, that, based on the, uh, the Ruby design, that is their own internal flavor. Uh, it does run Marlin 2.0, and the firmware and source code is all available through their website. I did verify that before the stream. Uh, so all of the open source Marlin stuff is available. The printer itself is not open source, but it does use Marlin open source firmware, and they appear to be in compliance with that. Uh, let's see. It comes with their standard hot end, which uses a... Titan-ish style extruder, an E3D Titan-ish style extruder, um, and a Genius nozzle. Um, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you ask, it is direct drive, but it, it does have a PTF feed liner all the way down to the hot end. However, they do sell a bimetal upgraded um, all-metal heat break for people that need to run at higher temps. If all you're running is PLA, most people don't have a problem with the liner, and in fact, a lot of people see that as preferred. What's in the box? Uh-oh, we have a hype train. Hype train. All right, so let me get through this, and then I'll pay attention to the hype train here. Uh, we have a 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters on the Z build volume, so it's a pr pretty traditional i3 standard build size ultra quiet drivers uh they are removable drivers they're not soldered onto the main board which means that you can upgrade them if you want to go to something like a 2209 or something else and um that's about the bulk of it 
All right, now I'm going to slide over here and we're going to take a look at the hype train, see what everybody's doing here. What's in the box? Oh, thank you for the subscription, Don Air. Oh, I need the mouse from up there to be able to scroll through this. Ooh, let's go backwards just a little bit. We have roses from Liz. I think those are roses. And you follow from the herbologist. Thank you. Slurred text. I do that every Friday and Saturday night. Fix him, dude. Subscribed. Thank you, fix him, dude. Artillery. Yes, artillery is still in business, and I believe they have some new printers coming out. See Travis, and we are up to an 87% on that hype train. We just need flex glass. There we go. Subsector subscribe. Uh, got a shout out. I'm sorry. And I really need better reading glasses. Tesla's, it looks like, started the hype train, or was that a combination of Fix and Dude, Don Air, and Tesla's? Well, I'm really bad. K2. In for 200 bits. If I'm missing anybody, I apologize. I'm trying to scroll back through. Replaceable disruptor drivers is cool. That is cool. Peonies. Okay, I'm sorry. They're not. They're not. Uh, flex glass. Not roses. They're flowers. They're all flowers. All right. So why that goes? Let's open the top plate. Um, Unless anybody has questions about the specs, it is pretty standardized. Um, very traditional i3, you know, platform. So this is the flex plate. I'm going to be a little bit careful opening the inter one, inter, inner one. So before we see what's in the box, yeah, I need new specs, Liz. Um, I've, I've got the, what are they called, transitions, the trifocal-ish ones, but when I'm, they're great if I'm trying to read text like this, but when I'm trying to read small text across like that, it just catches at the wrong angle for me. So I need some separate mono vision glasses for, I think, when I'm streaming. There is the flex plate. Looks like that. So let's see what's in the package here. It is shrink wrapped. You had to do it for driving with your glasses. Yeah, I, I do have that. Um, Dede Wesley, I have Monovision um, sunglasses that I use for driving. Um, generally, I just use these for most things. I mean, Technically, I'm, I can be like this, and technically I'm 20-20, um, but I still have starting to get a problem with the reading stuff at a distance, so happens when you get old. Liz had a jam. All right, so what's in the envelope? Watch your hands and fingers. So we have the Artillery 3D Flex Plate. It's textured, looks very standard and a magnetic base that's sized to fit and a warning to watch your hands and fingers. All right, so we're gonna set that aside. We all know how to apply that. And let's see what's on, oh, we're up to a level two. Up to a level two, what did I miss here? More from K2, I think that might have bumped us up, either that or my chat is lagging. Reach the tequila and tacos in portion. No, we're still on coffee tonight. And tonight's stream is sponsored by Fixem Dude. Get all of your Fixem Dude wear at fixemdude.com. That was a that was a joke, FCC. 
So this is the Genius um, that implies that it is very smart. I'm going to avoid any political jokes about other people who think they're geniuses, you know. Let me see something here. I'm going to switch over to here. You guys like that view better? Or that view? Let's see if I can... Get you guys a little bit better view. How's that? A little bit better view. Let me switch windows. Da da da. Mouse come back to this screen. Overhead is always better. There we go. All right. So if we like that better, we'll keep uh, the split there. I'm gonna swing that out of the way. What's in the box? Wow, level two up to 76%. Holy cow. I, you know, I'm not seeing donations on chat. Or I'm sorry, I'm not seeing bits. Oh, there we see a gifted tier one sub. Well, thank you. Um, for some reason, I'm not seeing these show up in chat. There was more from Kevin. Silver Sunbeam, 100 bits, 200 bits. Thank you all. I very, very, very much appreciate that. Any revenue made tonight is going to replace the HDMI capture card in this, um, my streaming computer, so that instead of being USB based, I can um, stream it native over PCIe on a Blackmagic card out to you guys and uh, hopefully get a little bit higher frame rates out of it. So I appreciate your bits and subs tonight. All right, we have the box open. If I turn it this way, does that, yep, okay. That might be a little bit easier to see. What's in the box? So we have this pocket has a quality QC check triangle sticker. This was QC passed by checker number 12. 12 is good. And we have a paper manual. Um, it is, looks like it is German in the back and English in the front. We're going to set this aside. Touch of finicky, finicky. Glasses test 100. I can read that, Major Games Geeks. Thank you. Kevin? Thank you. All right, we have spool holder parts. We'll set those over hither. We have a, what looks like a microphone bag, but this is their tool bag and spare parts. We'll also set that over hither. And this is an ex, um, this is in case your ABL fail, fails. Um, this is an optional Z or Z end stop. Uh, the printer doesn't have one because it has the ABL. So, but they give you an optional end stop, which is pretty cool is that you can plug in instead of the ABL in case you make a blueberry and the ABL fails. All right, so let's see what we can do about getting out this top layer of foam. We are on to a level three, holy cow. And thank you for everyone that's still joining in. Z or Z. Do not remove before finish assembly. Okay. Power cord.
Z bracket. And uh, so let's take a look at this while it's pulled out here. Got our extruder motor here. No? I'm sorry. That is your X motor here. Uh, aluminum or steel brackets. Let's find out which. Brackets are aluminum. And we have the ribbon cable, of course, here going across. Um, the X belt, which is sort of adjustable by loosening up these two screws to tension and tighten it. The Z ribbon coil. And uh, the extra cabling for the two Z motors here. And I'm guessing this is for that end stop to plug in. And this is for the filament sensor to plug in. So let's set this aside. Or actually, if you want to see the back, let me show you the back because we might not be able to do it so easy later. Uh, one of the things that artillery likes to do is artillery um, does what they call a synchronized Z axis, where basically they used a closed loop belt. So they have their two steppers here, and they use a closed loop belt across the top. Um, that basically sliding this belt moves these just like these. Uh, I'm not convinced that it really does anything when both of these are being driven by a stepper in parallel, but I'm not going to, to knock it without any engineering presence to say otherwise. Um, but it is something that is kind of unique to them. They also, they do kind of semi-properly preload this by putting the bearing at the top of the injection molded piece. And let's see. Darn right. Darn right. Handle TMW, I respect my international audience. You guys are very kind, very generous, and you have coffee crisp. Level three done. Woohoo! Thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. Like I said, that is all going towards a new capture card. So it is very much appreciated tonight. And see, Travis is going to head to bed before he passes out. Um, thanks for coming by. I hope you remember this tomorrow. Let's get the rest of this out of the box. Oh, this is not light. So let's set this here for a minute. I want to make sure that it gets in frame. There we go. So this is the base. We won't remove this before finish assembly. Um, we have the uh, their end stop here. Uh, they used to use inductive end stops on the the x1 x2 and genius so moving to a switch based end stop like this it's a plunger switch is actually something that's new for them uh, i do like their heat bed cabling here um, it is on a ribbon cable let me let me drop my ducky i want to see if i can show you this one moment. Okay. Can you guys see that um, here up in the corner? Oh, I have to send it to you, don't I? All right. So what they do is they, they have a little cutout here and they put their uh, heat bed cabling inside of here. So it's a nice folded seam. No floppy cable. And this is goes all the way up under the bed till about here. Um, so if we can see it. So this cable goes all the way up to about here. So 
about yay far up the bed. Um, or, or a good pointer finger, I guess about to where the tape is at. So that actually is kind of cool that it lays nicely like that. The cabling for X, Y, and Z and everything is this uh, PCIe style, cartridge style socket. So when that snaps on, you get a nice firm socket connection there. Uh, you, except for the stepper motors here. And again, the optional uh, end stop cabling here. If you end up going for the uh, optional Z end stop. All right, so we're going to go... Go back to there, then go back to there, and um, now they put the screws already in it. They're here. So literally, assembly is these four screws, which are already there, and it's done, and connecting the few points. Um, fan on the bottom. Power supply here. X motor, I'm um, sorry, uh, Y motor here. Full size USB on the side here. And um, where's our power supply switch? Oh. Ah, there we go. Power supply switch is already set to 110. I'm sorry, 115. It's on the back. Um, So if you live somewhere with 220, you flip it one way, if you're 115, you flip it the other, so you don't damage anything. And they give you the, some of the specs, Genius Pro, rated voltage AC 100 to 240, 500 watts max power consumption, gives you the weight, date of manufacture is nothing in it, build size, machine size, FDM 1.75, made in China. It's CE, FC, and Rojas. Now, this CE, I believe, is China certification. Um, and there's one thing on the bottom here. They do have a warranty void if seal is broken. And, of course, the, the touch screen, USB, and SD card up front. So it will read from either one. And a QC sticker. All right, so let's see if we have any questions hither in the chat. Big Jano came in. Yes, but does it fold? No, it does not fold. Why would anybody want a folding printer? Just kidding. Um, okay, so our assembly is going to be very simple. We're going to see which side has our little cartridge doohickey, which is this side. I'm going to move that tape out of the way. We're going to put it in there and get a nice satisfying click from it. We're going to flip this on its side. I'm going to hand start all four screws. I'm going to grab the appropriate sized tool on the first try. Oh yeah. Bada bing, bada bang. This should be quick. Are you back from your uh, your game, fix them, dude? As I hope you're not watching while you're driving. Um, so I didn't tighten these all the way yet. Um, I'm going to go do 
the outside two first. I did tighten them most of the way, but not all the way. Then we'll get the inside two. I mean, obviously this really relies on their manufacturing tolerances being spot on uh, because there's, you know, there's no way to adjust your, your, um, to trim it if you're out of square or anything. Okay. And it's assembled. How do you like that? Just like that. Uh, we just got to put the spool holder on the top and cut these zip ties off and plug in the cabling. So, one zip tie, two zip ties, and a lot of tape. So to raise this, since this is a synchronized belt, I can just grab this and the whole thing's going to go up. How you like that? And slide that up out of the way. So we're going to plug this into here. Going to plug in our stepper motor on this side, plug in our stepper motor on that side, and that is all built. Now, one thing we do want to check is our eccentric wheels to make sure that they're all grabbing. Ideally, if you can grab any wheel and see all of the other wheels turning. And none of them spin loosely. Okay. Um, one cool thing this has, if I can tilt this up and hopefully show you, if you're able to see, there's two screw holes. Let me try to get that in frame. There's two screws here and here. Now you have three wheels, two on the outside and one here, two of them here and another one here. These are cast aluminum brackets. If you tighten or loosen these screws, um, it basically tensions or untensions this inside wheel, and that's how you adjust your tension on, on these V wheels. So there's, there's no reason to adjust an eccentric nut or anything on those. You just tension this until you get the proper tension. It's pretty cool. All right, let's check chat. He has surprises. So many people to meet. Can't wait to meet Flex Mayu. I just wonder why they went that route other than faster heating. I would be worried. Okay, sorry guys, I'm scrolling back and just trying to catch up. See if you're chatting amongst yourselves or Oh, uh, the cable here, um, it, is a, it feels like a silicone-based cable. Um, it is a softer jacket, but there are, they show a picture of it on their website. Um, it is a softer outer jacket just to keep the cables bundled, but there are independent cables inside of there. Hopefully that answers your question. And 
Uh, let's see if this goes. Sorry, I hit it twice. Um, if you take a look there, you can see, follow along and see the pictures of it. Um, that is the link. Nope, this does not have metal wheels. This has palm wheels. Um, I'm sorry, Delrin wheels. Um, there's a lot of confusion. A lot of people think that these wheels are made of rubber. They are not. They are um, standard V V wheels are made of palm, P O M, or Delrin. Um, if you get clear ones, the harder wheels, they're a little bit louder, but they last longer. Um, the Delrin and the palm are slightly softer, so they will wear more. The hardened clear ones are polycarbonate. Um, and those will last a lot longer, stay accurate longer. If you really want to go far enough, you can get uh, metal wheels through open builds. Um, Open Builds is the company that invented this this style V slot and everything. Um, it's open source. Uh, unfortunately, there's a topic that nobody ever talks about: is Open Builds never gets credited on anybody building stuff out of V slot um, or using these V slot wheels because it is open source. Um, and I don't know how the license on that works. If they're, you know, if they're building with it, if they're supposed to be crediting it or not. So this thing is assembled. We just got to stick the spool holder on it and we're done. Now, this is a change from the earlier version as well. Um, there are bearings on here. Um... out there are bearings one of the the complaints from earlier versions of this was that they put rollers that didn't roll so your spool would drag on it it didn't do well so can it do a two and a half minute benchy no fix them dude it cannot do a two and a half minute benchy um it does come with two extra wheels a extra hot end, we're digging into the bag here. Uh, a USB stick, which we'll want to take a look at. You can bench me. You probably could. Uh, acupuncture needle and a hot end. Uh, it does come with a wrench in case anybody needs to adjust the eccentric nuts. It is a eight millimeter, 10 millimeter wrench. Um, mind you, it's not a stamped cut wrench. It's an actual full wrench. Chrome and everything. It's heavy. Yeah, Britt, I will uh, you'll definitely pick up tidbits on, on stuff that's been around, you know, for the past decade or so. Um, on my streams as far as things like that where it's, it's long forgotten about uh, open builds and their, you know, contributions to pretty much everything that we have in the 3D printing world today um, and so many other companies. I, I always try to keep the that relevant because, honestly, it is quite relevant. Um, and it seems to often be long over forgotten. All right, so I'm going to loop this around here, out of the way. This is our filament sensor, and it's done. All right, so let's uh, let me slide over here, and I'm going to grab something. All right, spool holder, Jesse PLA, it fits. Spool holder, filament one uh, with their extra wide rolls that they no longer use anymore. Barely fits, but it fits. These are about the, 
Well, this is about the widest spool that I still know that's in use today. This is pretty standard until they get, uh, unless you get one of the cardboard ones. I don't have any of the printed solid cardboard ones handy, unfortunately. And just looking back, it did not include any filament, not even a sample. I actually applaud that. That's a good thing. All right, so Bob Ross 61. Um, I am not sponsored by Artillery, but they did provide the product for me to review. Um, I'm not getting paid from them other than, you know, again, I, I can keep this when I'm done and do whatever I want with it. Um, I did flag the video as, as meeting uh, or as being sponsored content to meet FTC requirements or FCC requirements. Uh, but I am not technically sponsored by, by them other than they provided the printer for the review. Looks like a Fucos. Uh, you probably want to reverse that subsector. The Fucos looks like this. Artillery has been, was uh, one of the first companies that made this shape body around 2018 when Fucos wasn't even a uh, dream. No worries, Bob Ross. I just wanted to um, clarify for you. All right, so this is assembled. Ta-da, we could technically plug it in and go. However, I am going to take this off. I'm going to set that aside. We're going to take the QC sticker off the bed and the 120 volt sticker off the bed. Get the goop off there. Like so. Time to Benchy. OMG LOL. All right, we're going to take this magnet off of here. We're going to set it on here to see how accurate it is. It, there's a little bit of fudge room, so which is good. All right. So um, I'm going to flip this around where I can see it. And unfortunately, maybe you guys won't be able to as much. We're going to get out some 99.9% .9 medical grade IPA. I'm going to get out a shop towel. We're going to get this out of the way now before we do anything else. So as I said earlier, um, artillery, if you missed the beginning of the stream, artillery ships it with the glass plate. They have the flex plate as an optional uh, product for about $35 that you can add onto it. The reason I was told that they went that route was because not everybody likes the flex plates. Some people just prefer printing on glass. So by going this route, um, it, it affords people both options and you don't pay for a flex plate if you don't want it or need it. Benchies are Laze, print a squirrel instead. Subsector loves her glass. Uh, the only glass I like is a, is a wine glass.
everything else should be plastic. So I'm going to peel this off just a hair so I can get it positioned side to side. And get that down. Now we're going to slowly pull this out. And today, for sake of expediency, we are going to do something that I would normally yell at Pez Liz for doing if she did. Um, I'm putting the magnet on the glass right now, Liz. The, um, so this is something I would normally yell at people for is we're going to actually fire this thing up and start printing here immediately after I put this on. However, typically you want to, um, however, typically you want to let the adhesive from the magnet sit for about 24 hours after putting it on to allow it to, uh, to get best achieve or uh, best adhesion. Otherwise you can start getting bubbles under it. Um, and I'm a little bit off, but it's not clipping. So we're okay. So I'm just about a millimeter off on this side. I can take a razor blade and trim that up later. The flex plate appears to only be sprayed on one side. So Excuse me. Flex plate only appears to be sprayed on one side. And there we have it. While I have this here, we're going to give it an IPA spray. Yes, this is a do what I say, not as I do moment. Well, I'm not going to stream for 24 hours, Liz, so. Oh, I'm sorry, subsexer. I mean, if you all want to wait for 24 hours, you can hang out and chat, but I'm not going to stream that whole time. I'm hungry. I want food. Plus, this is going to go up on YouTube, and not everybody over on YouTube is going to want to sit here and interact and have fun like you guys, since it's already, you know, pre-recorded and stuff. All right. Uh, so it is built done. Let's turn it around. We're going to take off our power cord. Da -na 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 -na. Sitting in my carport. Have I seen that in directions or just a Voron myth thing with the magnet? Uh, the 24 hours drying, is that what you're asking about, Chewy? Um, I don't know if Voron people say that or not. It's actually from the 3M adhesive. It is in their directions to, to do that. Um, if you ever look up the, um, the 3M 300 LSE adhesive, they say once applied to allow it to cure for 24 hours before uh, putting any or putting it into use. So that would be where the um that information comes from um backstory a little bit when filament one was uh still owned by the original owner and they were coming out with the ultra stick plate i did a lot of beta testing for them uh some of that was involved with the different adhesives and the different magnet types that they used um, and that tended to be one of the common things that would come up back to is we'd start seeing the, the, the magnets bubble off if you didn't allow them to fully dry for the, um, and for the air to come out. So, um, there are some ways around that too, though. You can also try, um, unofficial recommendation, mind you, is you can do what's a, called a, a float, a float placement for that. You can spray your bed basically with ice, uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, you can put the magnet down where you want it, squeeze it out like a squeegee, like you're doing a windshield, and then allow it to dry over overnight. Um, as that 
alcohol evaporates and the glue takes hold, um, it allows it to float to where it wants to and, you know, doesn't get any air bubbles that way. Um, so that's just another way to, you know, to try to do that. A lot of, lot of little tips and tricks that you've picked up over the past two years. All right, so should we see... Um, I didn't check these wheels. Before I go any further, I'm checking these bottom wheels and they feel good. Yeah, I believe most manufacturers do that. There, there are ways around. I mean, there's, there's lots of trips. Like I said, the, um, it actually still takes longer, but you can do the, the floating application trick where you spray it with um, alcohol and let it evaporate out. Uh, that just allows you to position it without it, you know, um, having to repeal it if you don't get it straight. Um, there, there's, there's lots of options. All right, so, ready? Let's give it some juice. Yay, it turned on. All right, so, I'm going to walk around here and you guys want to see the LCD screen or do you want to see the whole unit? Um, or do you want to try to see the side of the unit? Let me see if I can do that. One moment, I'm looking at video here. Hang on. Okay, that's about, unfortunately, about the closest I can get you on that... Um, on that touch screen. Yeah, Ultasic is a great product. Um, still is a, is a great product. No magic smoke yet, yet. All right, so we have tools, we have set, and we have print. So let's take a look in tools. Heat, extrude, move, home. Level, change, filament, more, back. Let's look at more. Z, auto level, EEPROM save, back. Oh, and LED on and off. Let's do a home. Home all. Very standard MKS style touch panel. Hey, it homed. All right, let's go back. Let's go to level. That was bizarre. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, what did I do with that paper? Oh, yes. Even though we have auto leveling, we still want to plastic extruder arm. Uh, it is indeed a plastic extruder arm. That is correct. 
that is something I, I wish had been changed, but in this case it had not. Forgive me for having to cut around and maybe give you a side or a butt view here. So now the, the auto leveling will take care of this, but we still want it to be as close as possible. A little violent, eh, it's just abrupt. is a I want to wait for this to go -na 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 -na. Uh, that it depends uh, likely not. The first print is going to be whatever is on the manufacturer's slice code that they provided. That's good everywhere. Back. Back. More. Okay, we're going to go to auto level. Oh, we're going to need this one more time. And what their process has you do uh, is we got to set the Z offset by running through. It'll do the auto level. Then we'll set it to where it tells it to go to Z, Z, Z zero, Z zero, and um, ultim for the first print. Yeah. Uh, subsector, correct. The PEI, the, the flex plate is an add-on that you can add for about $35. They don't include it by default um, to allow you to choose what you want. Peak first stent. Somebody want to take a peek at the ultimate first print? Well, 
Well, I can't send you the glass. It's got the heat bed glued to it then. And now it has the magnet and the flex plate. It's all one piece. All right. Uh, we're going to go here. It's going to take us up to the front, go to the middle. All right, so now we see how far off we are. Looks like we need to go up. up a lot. There we go. Okay, that feels good. Save to EEPROM. And now that's done. Uh, oh, there's also the option. There's an LED in here. Off, on, off on all right let me grab some filament taking bets uh it doesn't show you what your offset is so i couldn't tell you but it was a positive number i had to go way up oh let's see what filament do we want to use um Riddle me this, riddle me that. I've got Prusament. I've got Polymaker. I've got some Atomic. Um, this is an open spool. How about we go for some Polymaker, Polylite PLA in yellow. Oh. Doesn't want to go. that through there get that up there I'm gonna go back move 10 millimeters Z Z up a whole bunch Push that in there, push it in a bit, go back, back, tools, change filament in. It's going to tell us that it's heating up to 200, which is kind of a little bit cold, but we'll go for that. Greasy bed, I've already cleaned it with IPA. All right, so why it does that, I'm going to pop this into my computer and we'll see what files are on it. Show me the monkey. Usb drive. Okay, we have... 
cube4.gcode and testingmodelcamber.gcode. And a PDF of the manual. So we can do the cube4 or the testing model camber. What do you guys say? Cube4 or testing model? Confirm. Ah, yes, that wonderful new hot end smell. Confirm. And we have filament loaded. How do you like that? I'm gonna go back, print. All right, if we do cube four, it's, it'll likely finish in time for the stream. If we do the testing model, it looks like a larger file, so we'll probably have to call it after that. So what do you guys think? We wanna finish it or we wanna call it in the middle of a print? Cube four. Cube, cube. That's one, two, three cubes. Finish it. Cube. All right. We're going cube. Confirm. Yep. You smell that machining oil. Cube. Confirm. It's heating up to 200 and it's putting the bed at 80. Wow. Okay, I don't know what those settings are, but I'm going to back that off a little bit. Set the bed to 60. Well, it won't let me do it while it's... Ouch, okay. Yeah, 280. That's like totally opposite. It's lacking self-confidence, it'll stick. Yeah, there we go. I don't want it to go that hot if I don't have to because that's going to make that bed that we're cheating on where we stuck the magnet on and we're printing before it's ready to go. Uh, yeah, you can't change the temps until the print starts, unfortunately. That is correct, defrizzle. Uh, because the touchscreens on these actually have their own microprocessor and firmware in them, and they're basically acting like a G-code sender. It's at 80, so bed's already at 80, and hot end's already at 200. No, I think I borked it. Oh no. I borked it. I think I pushed too many buttons too fast. Let's try this again. Yeah, 80 is insane for PLA bed temp. Who had won't stick in the pole?
Doesn't feel that hot. What's it doing? There it goes. Oh, the extruder's at 230. Holy crap. I think this was supposed to be ABS. Yeah, 70 to 75 is really hot for PLA. Um, No, 230 won't kill it, but it'd be nice if they had in the file name, you know, what it was sliced for, what material, so people know. It's going. Yeah, it shouldn't clog. Okay, this says we're at 260. That's strange. I think there's a bit of a calibration issue on there. Might need to run a calibration on the screen if there is one. It's going. Oh, so if we haven't said it earlier, today's stream sponsored unofficially by Fixem Dude. Fixemdude.com for all your awesome shirts. Dot com. Fan just kicked in. Doesn't show me any estimate on how long it's going to take. Fix a move. You can't send me $5 because then it wouldn't be unofficially sponsored. It is very quiet, yeah. That's with uh, the fan fully blowing right now, too. One improvement they did make over the previous models is, uh, and I know you guys probably won't see it, but you have the micro SD card slot and the USB slot here. The cutout around those slots was a little bit sloppy on the X1 and the earlier models that it was very easy to uh, drop SD cards down the hole, you know, missing the slot. What does... So 
I'm right up on it with the laugh. If you can hear that. Everything but broken hearts. USB is not the best location for wire management for us neuro neurotic makers. Over here, the external USB? Or are you talking about the... Um, talking about the thumb drive? I mean, there's plenty of open space inside here oh, for a clean-looking farm. Gotcha. There's plenty of room inside here, in, in, inside the, uh, the box, that you could always um, probably locate a pie inside of there. It, it is extremely quiet. I don't know what stepper drivers they're running. Um, they may be self-developed stepper drivers, but it is really quiet. Of course, it's also not printing very fast either. Um, I mean, Zombie Hedgehog would have Clipper on this by now. But. There's pie inside. Kobe, how are you? How's the knee? It's getting there. Um, we're about three millimeters up, maybe 20%. It's nice and slow. Pulled a quad? I thought you were uh, having problems with your meniscus. Mm, I'll ping you offline about that. Pretty good, doing good. This is the same people that make the, uh, the Hornet that we rehomed over to you. This is their newest model. You get zombie to start putting clipper. See, I'm one of those guys that believes uh, you don't buy a brand new car just to start ripping the engine apart to start adding mods onto it without having a benchmark of what the car can do. So we're getting there. It's going slowly. Happy Sunday. Still get yelled at for preaching Clipper. No, always test for working in Marlin. I mean, if, if Clipper works for you, Clipper works for you. But um, the same reason that I always print what's on the USB stick with every printer first is because, in theory, that USB file that's provided by the manufacturer has been tested and tuned by them. Um, to work and it gives you at least a benchmark of what the printer is going to be capable of doing, good, bad, or otherwise, be, you know, before you start messing with things. We could try speeding this thing up a little bit. More streams, please. I try, man. It's work is crazy right now with the day job and beta stu testing stuff. Um, I'm trying to stream as often as I can right now. And no, we don't print on wood, Mike. We'll leave that for you Canadians and other people in the north. It, 
exactly a silver sunspeen. Oh yes, this is a very awesome shower curtain. Should we um, should we hit ludicrous speed on this thing? Speed. Should we bump it up? What do you think? Definitely some calibration issues on this thing. Oh. Okay, I need to take this back down. We're going to be over extruding here because I hit that and move. There we go. Two hundred and eight, two hundred fifty. Good, two hundred fifty-six percent faster. How's that? Oh, you're over in Upland. Cool. Um, I have a, a ton of stuff that I'm getting ready to get rid of. If you want bits, parts, and pieces. Um, I have a lot of stuff that's probably going to go in the in a dumpster in the near future. I'll, I will do that. Um, literally, I just tossed a box of steppers yesterday. You love e-waste. Gomi hunting, dumpster diving. That used to be the thing. 250, should we go faster? Well, if we're gonna go faster, we're gonna take the extrusion, I'm sorry, the temperature, up some. So we can take our temperature for our extruder. Oh, it just stopped. Oh, I hit pause. Okay, preheat. Four hundred. You guys want four hundred? We'll go four hundred. That's the max. Four hundred. We'll see if we can do it. Four hundred. Waiting to do the Chris Riley Monoprice i3 upgrade. Uh, I do not still have my um, my uh, duplicator i3. I had two of them at one point, and I donated, uh, which I do a lot with a lot of my machines. Um, I sent those over to a cousin who basically takes machines, gets them up and working, and then donates them to uh, like local STEM clubs and stuff. Uh, make sure that they don't go, you know, in e-waste directly, but they they uh, go to someone that can use them, a kid's club or something at a local school. So 
So yeah, we're at 400% and I did take the speed up to 200 or the temperature. Doesn't really look like it's printing much faster. Um, I mean, it's noticeably, but I don't think this cube is large enough that we're going to, you know, exceed the acceleration deceleration rates to be able to see a huge speed difference. So, um, yeah, my theory on printers, I, I think Joel does similar too up there, is printers that I buy for myself and, and for my own use are one thing, but printers that I get in from manufacturers for review. I don't technically pay for those printers. And while often the printer itself is my payment, um, you know, for doing it and legally and technically I could turn around and sell those printers. I often don't feel right doing that. So what I will usually do after I finish reviewing a printer and stuff is I will pass it uh, along to a friend or a coworker, or uh, like I said, if they're questionably um, questionable quality or whatever, or old, um, I, I will pass those, you know, to my cousin or myself, we'll get them refurbished and we'll pass them on to a STEM club. Uh, Kobe is a local recipient of a printer down here, which we still need to get him using. So, um, subsector, we're just printing the, uh, the pre-sliced cube that was on there, which looks like it was pre-sliced for PETG or ABS. And so we've kind of manually adjusted the temperatures and we've, uh, cranked up our speeds to 400 and took the temperature up a bit as well. I mean, it does have a volcano hot end, so it should be able to move some. The printer Santa, I don't know. I think Joel has the printer Santa thing down. Uh, Joel seems to be giving, uh, building up a lot of stock and giving away printers. So as much as I would love to say I could keep every printer I ever come across and, you know, have a home for it at some point, but run out of space. Tacos and horchata sounds wonderful, Kobe. Yeah, Joel, Joel trades his printers for donuts and a bag of dicks. I see a color shift after I, uh, we changed the speed and the filament temperature to go with it, um, but no layer shifts or anything. And it... So we're at 69%. So we're getting there. So again, if anybody wants to read up on this printer or even pick one up for themselves, that's the link. Um, it's not an affiliate link or anything. That is just the artillery link. Uh, I believe they are on sale right now. Where they got their patch in today. Instagram got hit. Oh, and a shake. That's right. I don't know. This color you know, with the this yellow with the the color changes on it. I mean, I, you guys can't really see it. I don't have the ability to zoom in this camera anymore. It's just a, uh, a burrito. Um, but this color kind of reminds me, even though it's supposed to be yellow kind of, with the speed changes and stuff, it kind of reminds me of like an orange creamsicle.
Dream sickle. Mm -hmm. So Koi, I think we need to get you like a mini printer about yay big, like a, a Voron V0. And then you put it, you know, on your desk between your decks, like in front of the mixer. So you can just have the printer right there going while you're, while you're doing your thing and right there. I think that would be ideal for you. Won't say no to that. We just need to get you printing, man. Life's been too busy. We need to find time where I can make it over there and show you how to how to use yours and get you running. Now I have a craving for tree so we can sell us free tacos from City Tacos. Admit it, you miss California. You want to move back. Yeah, I don't blame you. We'll um, we'll try it on a different computer. Uh, we don't want you to crash your your main rig. Also, don't let me forget to take down the, the trash cans. No Cali taxes for me. No, instead you have Texas property taxes. Still no air printing. It's good. It's nice and slow. So how is everyone? Who's still with us? Let me do a little refresh. We know Koi's broken. We know Koi's broken. Won't be after you retire though. Um, half the man he used to be. Maybe three fourths. I wouldn't quite go half. One K today is pretty good. Yeah. You have you and zombie doing at the same time. Some nice chill voices. Bronchitis is killing me, but otherwise good. That is good. Bronchitis is bad. Um, <clears throat> do I need to try to do an Asmir voice or something for you, Liz? Oh, hey, Liz. Oh, you want to watch the printer do his thing? Uh huh. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to go in circles for you, yeah. Oh, you made 1K as in on your stream. I misunderstood that. I thought you meant at work that you made a grand today because we were just talking about taxes. I was confused. Bob's here. Bob's always late, but Bob's here. Bob's welcome any day. Welcome, Bob. Bob, did you get your homework done for today? I'm going to need to, if we do end up moving to Texas, I'm going to need to have to study fix some dude and get pick up his southern drawl. Successfully ignored it all weekend. That's my man. Um... I did most of it this morning, except for the stuff that required drying. And we are at 95%. Okay, so it's printing the top, so it's not quite a cube, it's a square. 
No one in Dallas has a southern draw. No one's from here. That's true. Fixum Dude has more of a, a, a Midwest relaxed voice. Need to clean the nozzles for the video. Can't record such a mess. Yeah. You have an Android phone, it won't matter. You wanted to test your new dryer? How'd it work for you, Mike? Closer to the DFW airport, you get everyone in California. That's true. Southern twang now that I'm in Georgia. And it's done. Whoa, look at that. It's done. What do you think? Should we do a little? Ooh. Well, there we have it. It's done. It's done. I'm going to let that properly cool down and pop off because of, uh, again, the magnet, so we don't torch it. But it works. Four screws out of the box. Plug a couple of things in. Bada bing, bada boom. We have an artillery cube. This is um, a Polymaker Polylight. Um, PLA subsector best Texas barbecue is pecan lodge uh, fix and dude what's the barbecue place that we found that we liked I can't remember the name of it now I think I tried the one in McKinney and you went to the other one and we, we both gave it a, a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10? Hutchins, there we go. That makes sense. That place, I, I my bar might be lower, you know, coming from California, and we have pretty crappy barbecue out here, but um, you've been there three times since I was there. Wow. I, that was a couple years ago, Kenda. Um, yeah, the wife and I were there looking at houses a couple years back. It's been a while. But, all right, well, we have, was it last year? No, it wasn't last year. It wasn't last year. I remember these things. That's true, we only did uh, get together for about 30 minutes. Oh. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you for joining us. Um, for all the YouTube people out there that are catching this later, thanks for catching it later. And um, we hope this seems simple and easy enough for you to get out of the box. Uh, stay tuned. I'll put, put it through its paces and um, give more of a more in-depth review, an actual review, not just an unboxing and uh, to going. See you later, YouTube.